Dapa Kabar, Assalamu Alaikum, Konnichiwa. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is to thank uh, Ahsan Qureshi for inviting me for the second time to um, give a, a workshop and a photo talk. I also will not forget uh, to thank Mehwesh, his lovely wife, who is the power be be uh, behind uh, Ahsan. So, and thank you for coming. I hope um, the talk uh, meets your expectations. Um, yes, I am a travel photographer. I live in New York City. Um, I wasn't a travel photographer. I hesitate to call myself a photographer. I'm, I think I'm more of a documentarian. Um, this is my second career. About 16 years ago, I worked for a financial institution and decided to quit in, I think, 2000, some 2001 or so, and embraced the, um, the travel photography. I started out uh, by giving photo workshops, taking people on trips, uh, on photo expeditions, and this is how I discovered the journey that you will uh, join me on now. Um, while on a trip to a photo expedition in um, Vietnam, it was probably my third or fourth uh, trip, I was leading a group and um, in, um, we went to Sa Pa, which is a town um, in the northern part of Vietnam. And I discovered a religion, a new religion, and it so absorbed me the rituals took me in so much that this is what I've done for the past two years. I've started in 2014 and ended in September 2016. I took six trips, six trips from New York City to Hanoi, logged over 100,000 miles, um, 204 hours of flight time, and that ended up with a photo book. So this is my story, or story of my journey into a mystical world, the world of Dao Mao, of Hao Dong rituals, and the world of the Vietnamese mother goddess religion. So I was walking in the streets of Sa Pa. Uh, I was on my own. The other participants in my workshop had gone to the market. I had done that before, so I didn't go with them. And suddenly, as I walked past a um, nondescript building, um, I heard music wafting from, uh, from one of the rooms. So I went in and I saw a, um, these elderly women standing in line, very, very composed, wearing red uh, dresses, red costumes. And no one spoke English. I speak almost no Vietnamese, obviously. Um, and so I asked, what is it with my hands? What is it? And they said, uh, Dao Mao, Dao Mao, Dao Mao. And they welcomed me, and I went and took many photographs. Um, none of them had any problems with me being there. They continued the ceremony, and I thought it was something relating to either Buddhism or uh, Confucianism. I was half right. A few days later, uh, we moved onwards to a town called Bakha, which is a little bit further north towards uh, China. And exactly the same thing happened in the evening. Um, I was walking on my own, they had been, the uh, group had been, were tired, so they stayed in the hotel, and I walked up to a little, very small temple, and I heard music coming out of it, a little bit different from the first one. I thought it was somebody rehearsing Jimi Hendrix. Uh, uh, so I went in, um, removed my shoes, uh, bowed a few times. People were extremely surprised to see me there. They had a sort of a suspicious look, on their face at first, but I sort of uh, turned the charm on, I guess, and I began shooting this uh, person here. Now, this person here is a medium. 
She's a fortune teller, and she is a follower of um, Dao Mao, this particular religion. She changes, she changed, the ceremony took place over, I think, about three or four hours, and she changed costumes about, I would say, about 15 times. The people you see around her, these two, the three people here, are her assistants. They help her changing uh, into the costumes. Remember, I had no idea what they were doing. I had no idea what they were talking about. I, would, I had no idea what they were saying and, or what they were praying to. So I took a pictures, pictures for about three or four hours. This is a guy who reminded me of Jimi Hendrix. And I went back to Hanoi, where the internet connection was a little bit better, and um, I researched the words of Dao Mao. Dao Mao, by the way, is the religion of Mother Goddess. Let me jump into the, a little bit of an explanation. Mother Goddess is a, uh, almost universal in all religions. You have, obviously, Mary, mother of Jesus. You have Pachamama in Latin America, in Bolivia especially, the Mother Earth. You have in India, one of my favorite countries, you've got Durga. You've got Isis, the pharaonic Egypt, uh, Egypt where, I, where I was born. All of these are mother goddesses. The, you can call them something else, but they, in essence, they are very similar to what I found in Vietnam. And I discovered that this religion that I had absolutely no clue about, and you will find out, you will join me in discovering it, that it combined all these things. It had religion, mysticism, history, prohibition, because the French colonialists, mostly Catholics, did not want uh, their subjects to get involved in indigenous religions. Uh, Ho Chi Minh regime did not want them to deal in superstition. It was basically the communist ethos was no religion whatsoever. There is fashion, as, you can, as you've seen and you will see. There is music, poetry, alternative lifestyles. Uh, this particular religion welcomes all lifestyles, whether it's uh, all, all LGBTs are very, very welcome. Uh, gay men, homosexuals, were uh, found refuge in that particular religion because it gave them space to uh, work, do what they wanted, to uh, pretend to be uh, women goddesses, to wear fancy clothes, to put lipstick and so forth. Um, secretive because of the government interferences. They went into trances. There's a traditional belief system, superstition, blah, 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 all of that. So as I said, the Dao Mao is the worship of mother goddess in Vietnam, and during the Hao Dong ceremonies, the mediums go into trances. What happens is that the medium, uh, the special the people, uh, go to temples and uh, hold ceremonies and invoke the spirits to enter their bodies. And they go into an incarnation of roughly 36 to 72 uh, deities and goddesses. It also involves a lot of military, military uh, history. For instance, this wonderful looking, lovely woman who is a medium is incarnating one of the generals, Vietnamese generals, who um, defended Vietnam from the invasion of the Mongols. The ceremony, ceremonies um, start off by um, praying to the altar. Now, Dao Mao is a combination of Confucianism from China, uh, Taoism, and Buddhism, and indigenous beliefs. The population of Vietnam is about 90 million people. 45% of them, so let's say 40 million people, 
um, ascribed to one form of an indigenous belief. And yet no one outside of Vietnam knows this particular religion. What attracted me to it when I did the uh, research is that no non-Vietnamese photographer had ever done or documented this religion. There were many very talented Vietnamese photographers who did a little bit of work, videographers and so forth. No one had done it before. They start the ceremony by uh, pretending or simulating that they are signing a decree or a prayer. And you can see that um, they are using Chinese calligraphy. This is not the way the Vietnamese write. This is not modern Vietnamese. Here the medium uh, announces herself to the Dao Mao goddesses, deities, and asks for permission to start the ceremony. It's a woman's belief system. Um, I was struck by every time I go to a ceremony in a temple, most 90% of the attendees, most of the audiences were women. There's a French missionary, Catholic, who went in the 18, uh, late, uh, late 1800s to Vietnam, and he said that the religion of a mother goddess is for hysterical women. That was not well received in Vietnam, obviously. So once I got involved in, uh, in, uh, the, the, um, in, in this ceremony, uh, I decided to devote as much time as I could and as much as I could uh, in terms of uh, finances to um, document it as much as I could. It's contrary to other religions, to the monotheistical religions. Um, it's all about now, it's not about later. There is no reward at the end of life. Rewards are all about now. If you do good, then you will get your reward in the, in the few days coming. I've, then, I've questioned myself as why I was attracted to this religion, and it's, um, I will sp perhaps speak to it a little bit later, but um, I always prided myself when I started off my travel photography that I knew probably 90% of all the religious rituals in the world. Why did I go to religious rituals and document them? Because in a religious setting, people are more are transparent, there are no, there's no artificiality, and they are totally unaware of photographers. Um, and it also fed something I am, I will admit to you, I'm not religious at all, um, but I was uh, very interested in how other people embraced their religion to the point that I was extremely impressed. I also found out that UNESCO would soon legitimize, if you will, the religion of Dao Mao and accord it one of its highest uh, recognitions um, by giving it um, the uh, intangible heritage on, uh, they, would, it, they would put it, it would put it on the um, intangible heritage list. I won't bore you with the details of Dao Mao, but this is what the pantheon of Dao Mao looks like. 60 to 72 different spirits. I had to be able to identify each of these goddesses when they were, or gods, when they were incarnated. And the way to do it is by the colors. Red, green, white, and yellow. The, the women were uh, sort of, uh, uh, triangular hats, the men, the mandarins wear round hats. This is what an altar of the Holy Mothers look like. 
This is one of the mediums in trance. And if you look to the upper part there, you will see red Coke bottles, Coca-Cola bottles. This is one of the offerings. They're very big in giving offerings to the gods and the deities, and these are papier mache figurines that they order, and at the end of a the ceremony they burn. A horse also has an offering. Now all these things cost a lot of money. I went to a workshop that prepares these things, and they're made of, as I said, paper and rattan. And I was told that the man who owns this, the little shop, it's like a garage, is a multimillionaire. He didn't look like a multi-millionaire, but that's what I was told. The clothing is very, very important. These are the costumes cost roughly about 200 to 300 dollars each, and they have to use about. I would say about 20 to 24 different sets. The expensive ones are made, are embroidered by hand. The less expensive ones are made in China. This is one of the stores that sells these costumes. And the lady down on the, on the left hand side is a, a medium. You can see the mediums are very modern for the most part. So this is one of the most attractive mediums I met. It's, um, it's a bittersweet story, but I interviewed about 12 uh, mediums. She was one of them. Um, she was a single mother. Uh, her husband left her when her, kid, her child was three years old. Um, she had to find a job, so she took a job because she's extremely attractive. She took a job as a dancer in a nightclub. Perhaps to absolve the quote-unquote stigma in Vietnam to work that she was working in a nightclub, she became a medium. This is another medium. Um, a good friend of mine, who developed to be a very good friend of mine, her name is uh, Win V. V is for her first name. Uh, one of the best mediums I've ever seen in, uh, in my time there. She, um, you know the expression, uh, an actor goes into, is, is um, the role gets under the skin of an actor. This is what she used to, to do. She would alternate between um, uh, ecstasy, um, anger, uh, martial attitudes and sorrow. An incredible, an incredible actress. The music that accompanies the um, ceremonies is called Chao Van. It's a very old tradition, uh, probably since the inception of this um, of the of the uh, this belief system, and it's mostly poetry. Uh, what they do is that they uh, sing and they load the accomplishments of the deities that appear in front of them. So for instance, the white prince, the white prince arrives on a white, on a white horse or something like that. Um, this is one of the, um, I think one of my best pictures because this uh, illustrates what happens uh, at the time of incarnation. The uh, red sheet that you see on top of her, she flings it off her body. She is covered by the red cloth and waits for the incarnation, the deity to, in, to enter her body. Once it's there, she feels it's there, she trembles and throws the cloth away. Which means that the, right now the, the spirit is in her body. The mediums go into trances, this is one of them. And you can see her assistant is whispering advice to her behind the fan. 
This is a male medium. Um, the mediums, before they go into a ceremony, they have to fast for three days. They eat only vegetarian food. Um, on the last day, they, um, they don't eat at all. They abstain from sexual relations for about two weeks. Uh, all this to have a pure body while they are being incarnated. This man was so in, uh, overtaken by the emotions that he actually vomited in the middle of the ceremony. It's not unusual to see a medium uh, haranguing the deities because they've um, done something wrong or she is not pleased with what the, um, uh, the result of her incarnation is. This is another very interesting, to me, a very interesting picture because I was in a very small village in, north, in northeast Vietnam, uh, very, very poor, and you can see from the ceremony there that there are only about five or six people. Uh, the medium is a man, but what uh, took my attention is the woman on the left-hand side. She is um, uh, in ecstasy, in religion ecstasy. She's in, I think they call it exaltation. She completely lost it, and she began trembling and falling on the ground. I've seen this a lot in uh, Sufi temples, where people actually also do the same thing. Uh, another member of the audience is in a trance. She is doing the uh, Buddhism's hand signal for, um, I think it's called a mudra, something. Uh, and she is exorcising the spirits from her. All these are in trances. Now, whether you believe in trances or you, you, you don't, um, I have no way of judging if they are real or not. Um, and it's not... Uh, it's not my position to judge either way. But if, if they weren't for real, uh, they are pretty good damn actresses. Again, this is uh, my friend V, otherwise known as Lotus. In real life, she um, wears toned jeans. Her hair is cropped very, very short and is dyed blue. So she's a kind of a punk in real life. This is the dancer in a nightclub. I think she's one of the prettiest mediums I've seen. And you can see the elaborate decoration of her hair, her earrings and her um, costumes. It takes about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, sometimes even 30 minutes to change into a costume. This is um, a very accomplished Chao Van musician, Mr. Min. Um, he is also in a trance. A man. Here I I should mention that all religions have money, uh, whether it's donations, whether it's tithe, whether it's zakat, whether it's whatever else. Uh, in uh, Haodong, it's a little bit different. There is money involved, of course. But what happens is that the, there are money donations that are given to the medium. So let's say I give them $10. Um, they return to me $8. But the value of the $8 to me is a hundredfold more in terms of value than what I gave them because it's blessed by the deities. Oh, here, the, uh, the, um, Mr. Hung is giving me, or is giving the attendant money to give me. I probably uh, attended, I don't know how many ceremonies. I probably, every time I traveled, I came back home with about uh, 15 to $20 worth of Vietnamese money. 
the donations uh, from the audience to the um, deity or to the, to the medium. Uh, you can see there that she has a dish and there are notes, uh, Vietnamese dong's notes, and she is asking him a question. She's asking for advice. Um, she hides her face or her lips from others because it's probably a personal, a personal advice, personal question. One of the most interesting um, phase of the ceremonies is when at the, fi at the very end, the medium gets a stack of freshly minted money and throws it to the audience, throws it at the audience. And this is where they say, Komo Adi. Komo Adi means princess, let it rain. Now this is interesting because the farmers um, always look for rain. And it's an analogy between rain, uh, fertility, and money. As I said, it's not as serious or solemn a ceremony. People go there, eat uh, sunflower seeds, they drink tea, they have fun. There is no um, strict uh, rules. They can leave whenever they want. There is nothing, um, there is no, absolutely no pressure. I took, th this is a very uh, unique uh, photograph because um, the costumes that the, uh, the, uh, the mediums have are sacred and they keep them in a wooden chest and they would never let me take their photographs dressed in one unless it was at a ceremony. Um, here, Win V, Lotus, uh, she's an iconoclast. As I said, she's a punk in real life. Um, she allowed me to take her picture in a studio. I had about 10 minutes to do it, not more. And the dress is all black, very unusual, and the um, deity or the goddess is called ba uh, Shwaba Cafe. And as you can tell, it's the goddess of coffee. Age has no limits in Haodong or Dao Mao. This lady here is 92 years old, and she, do, she performs every week. Sometimes she, she cannot stand, so she performs sitting down in a chair. She's a master teacher of Haodong. I, put, I did this diptych, or whatever it's called, um, just to show you how beautiful the colors are, and the makeup, and the hats. Um, this is a medium I interviewed, uh, Zio Hua, at her home, and you can see the chest of costumes there, and she's holding the uh, costumes uh, to show me, but she'd never uh, wear them in front of me. I was in a little town in, um, in, the northern, in the northeast Vietnam, and I met this lady, um, medium, and she told me um, through an interpreter that she had lived under French occupation, the colonialists, and under, obviously under Ho Chi Minh. And uh, the ceremonies had to be done in the dark at night, no music, almost underground. If not, the French would put them in prison and Ho Chi Minh would do some, probably do something worse. This is one of the mediums. You can see that she's extremely modern. She, uh, her, in her, um, her day job is selling toys in the market. The reason, the reason why I was, uh, I fell in love with uh, uh, Hao Dong and Dao Mao is, uh, it, it's a personal thing, I guess, uh, but being there transported me back in history. It was as if I was thrown back so many centuries um, ago. Uh, the atmosphere, the ambience, the music, the theatrics, there are mostly a lot of theatrics in them. Um, the exotic fashion, the costumes, the smells, and so forth, it was almost a sense of euphoria for me. I was in a different world. Um, the
the Vietnamese, I, I, I was in Vietnam in 2003 and I didn't like the Vietnamese at all. Uh, they were very rough, I think, very gruff to me, I think. Um, it, it didn't click. But then I discovered them when I went the first time in 2011. And I, uh, I felt very, very uh, attached to them because of what they've been through. And they've treated me with the utmost kindness. I think the, my involvement into Dao Mao reaffirmed this feeling. Um, there was at, an, 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 sorry, um, at no point of time was I asked for money, fees, um, bakshish, nothing. I was never paid, I never paid uh, any money to any of the mediums, none of the participants of the audience and all the audience, all the uh, musicians, never. It took me, the uh, ceremonies and this particular religion took me, um, absorbed me completely. The, and this is the joy of having a personal project that, um, that you fall in love with. Um, I think it was lo love at first sight, re-energized uh, re, um, my photography, re-energized my audio skills, I record a lot and re-energized re re my empathy for the Vietnamese. This is dangerous because falling in love with a personal project and uh, uh, coming to its end um, is a little bit, um, there is a withdrawal. It's like being um, weaned off drugs. And when I finished the project in um, uh, summer of last year, say October, uh, the following months I felt an, uh, an enormous void in my uh, creativity. So one of the dangers of being totally absorbed in a personal project is that, that once you finish, you will feel empty. There were many um, uh, challenges that I faced during uh, the uh, completion of my book, of my project. Uh, obviously, I'm, a, I'm not a Vietnamese. I couldn't speak uh, Vietnamese. I can pick up Malay, India, whatever. Uh, Vietnamese, I had absolutely no way of, of, uh, of even uttering a few sentences. Now, that might work. Um, it's a 50-50 thing. Sometimes maybe they accepted me a little bit uh, easier, more easily because I was a foreigner. The community of Haudong uh, on Dao Ma was very opaque. Uh, it's not everybody that can go in and um, take pictures or get, they, they wouldn't give you, they wouldn't give anybody, uh, every, everybody uh, an interview. Uh, the ceremonies are not announced. There's no time out per se for Dao Mao. There's no, there are no lists. Um, I had to establish a very strong rapport and trust relationship with the mediums and the, and the musicians. I had to uh, demonstrate that I respected the tradition. And one of the main problems, too, is getting accurate information. Now, the mediums are highly strong people, very, very uh, high-strung. And they are artists, they are, uh, they are creative people, and they are like artists, very jealous of each other. So if a medium starts with a green god, and another one starts with a red god, then the one who starts with a green god criticizes the one that starts with a red god because um, that's not the way it should be. Dao Mao is not written, it's an oral tradition. It, it moves, it's uh, word of mouth, generation to generation. So how did I pull it off? Um, I can be, um, when, I, when I want to, I can be charming. Uh, when I don't want, then, then I'm not. Uh, so how, how did I pull it off? The ball of string. 
Um, when I was in Vietnam in, uh, at the beginning of this project, I met a uh, photographer, Vietnamese photographer, uh, part-time photographer. She works in a cosmetic company, a very large cosmetic company, sales executive. She has the gift of a gab. She would sell ice to Eskimos and that sort of thing. Um, I met her and I asked her at the very beginning, can you help me? Do you know anything about Dao Mao? And how long? She said, no, but I can help you and I will help you. And she did. So this project, and this book, would not have been made without the assistance of Ms. Tan Tu. And I'm, I dedicate a, a whole paragraph to her in, the, in my book. When I published the book um, in August, I think, uh, September of last year, um, I also was helped by the uh, friendship of a um, uh, reporter in Hanoi who learned of my um, project and she uh, drafted press releases in Vietnam in Vietnamese and sent it to all her Vietnamese colleagues. So when I went and launched my book in Hanoi in November, um, I was um, received with, um, I was welcomed, and I had a lot of um, press coverage in most of the um, newspapers of Vietnam. I was also interviewed by prime TV channels, short clips, and even one uh, hour uh, with a very famous uh, TV anchor in Talk Vietnam. I printed a lot of marketing materials. This is one of the posters. This is the book. I had three versions of a book. I had one that was really very large about so, coffee book um, that I dedicated to the people who were kind enough to buy it. And then um, two others that were smaller, hardcover and softcover. They're available on Amazon, available on Blurb. My main marketing tools to sell the book, Eventbrite, Facebook, my blog, website, and direct mailing campaign. Here are some of the pains and disappointments I, I got. Uh, I thought that because I loved Dao Mao and Hao Dong, that it would be very well received in, uh, uh, elsewhere. I uh, solicited the support of the academia in, um, in the United States. I think uh, about four or five, none of them responded to my emails or phone calls. And these are people who had studied uh, Dao Mao and had published books uh, from an academic standpoint. Only one person, doctor, um, in the um, University of London responded to me. There are no available books on Dao Mao except in Vietnamese, and even the New York City Public Library had none. I approached about a dozen to 15 main photo, publisher, photo book publishers, like Taschen, in Germany, and this is the kind of emails I got. They have no interest. <clears throat> if you have a photo book with boobs on the cover, it will sell. If you don't, then good luck. I approached the Asia Society in New York, whose mission is to bridge the gap between the um, United States and Asia. They didn't give me the time of day. They were totally disinterested in getting involved with the Vietnamese religion. So what did I gain from the personal project except personal growth and satisfaction of uh, completing a project? Tangibly, nothing. The reward on the investment is negative. But for me, the intangible rewards were everything. So my advice is, if you want to nurture something in you, a need, 
a hunger, look for a personal project that you fall in love with. It's like falling in love with your girlfriend, falling in love with your wife, but vice versa. I worked in the financial industry for 20 plus years. And as I stand with you here, I don't remember a single deal that I've done in details. I don't remember, and I don't care. I've done multi-million dollar deals. I don't remember one. In 10 years' time, God willing, I will remember this book. Thank you very much.